Okay, um, now, um, a lot of people get the, the misconception about Islam being, uh, us being very serious and very scary people. <laughs> uh, but uh, break that misconception down, we introduce a, a, a Muslim comedian, his name's uh, Nabil Abu Rashid, all the way from uh, London. So, um, if anyone's got a chance, as soon as he walks in, just um, clap your hands. So. And the most awkward introduction goes to you. Who's going here? Hi, everybody. Uh, this is, I will tell you that I'm really excited to be here, but I'm a Muslim, and in my religion, lying is a sin. So, um, <laughs> I was also meant to be performing like half an hour ago, but uh, as we know with Muslims, being on time is also a sin these days. So, uh, I want to apologize. <laughs> I want to apologize. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, are there the Muslims in here? Obviously, so, Assalamu alaikum to all the Muslims. Wa alaikum salam. Um, I understand there's some seats in here. Bye, Guru Ji, Dakar, Um, Jai Sri Ram, and who are you to all the Arsenal fans? That's all the major reasons that they've been covered. Um, and hello, obviously. Uh, <laughs> um, it's really nice. I come all the way down from London, and um, it's, it's nice to be at this conception of the Islam show. You know, a lot of people have a lot of misconceptions about Muslims. You know, like with most religions. Uh, but one misconception people have about Muslims is that we're evil, angry people constantly plotting on how to destroy the world. And that is so untrue. So, so untrue. We've got better things to do. Like arguing with other Muslims on Facebook. That is a very, <laughs> that is a very important part of our faith. I can tell you, I'll give you an example, right? Here's the thing. We will never ever be able to defeat most of our problems if we don't face the serious issues, right? But if you find too many Muslims angry about stupid things, like, for example, and don't worry, I'm just making up Muslims, I'm going to talk about everyone else. No! And with Muslims, you find us arguing about little things, insignificant things. Like, for example, Facebook, halal or haram? <laughs> <laughs> for those who are not Muslims in the audience, um, halal is acceptable or good, and haram is forbidden. Now, we have a lot of people arguing, oh, Facebook, halal, haram, halal, haram. I had this one guy come out and say that Facebook is haram on Facebook. Now. <laughs> But what you know is that three people liked it. I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> you know, you get them all having like, someone comes, no, 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 brother, no, brother, no, brother, no, brother. What you are saying is incorrect. Facebook is my crew. <laughs> Great <Great-era. laughs> Facebook is my crew. Twitter, hala if you post hadith. <laughs> And Instagram, Instagram. <laughs> no, 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 brother. No, brother, what you are saying is wrong. You do not have the Daniel to say this. Daniel defamation. <laughs> no, brother, you don't have the Daniel to say this. Facebook is halal. MySpace, Macro. Twitter, halal. Instagram, MashaAllah. <laughs> Facebook is halal, but only if you just add the brothers, don't add the sisters. <laughs> then I say, no, 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 brother, it's okay to add the sisters, okay, it's okay to add the sisters, just don't poke them. And it's <laughs> you can talk brother, it's okay for you, mashallah, but you don't make sister. <laughs> then I come back, but brother, if I poke other brothers, doesn't that make me... <laughs> with one voice, and we only have one opinion. But if forget that even amongst Muslims, we argue all the time. Now, um, I forgot to mention, uh, my, my wife and I just had our first um, anniversary a couple of months ago. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to mention, I forgot. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> that one, I was like, but darling, every day is like an anniversary with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, you know, uh, but the thing is, I, I realize now, because uh, in Islam, I don't know about other religions, but in Islam, marriage makes up half of your religion, right? Half of your being. So this is a very serious thing in, in the life of a Muslim, you know? But the thing is, you get married to a woman, right? And uh, men, if you're not married, I'll tell you this now, you see the wedding, 
That's not about you. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter what religion you're from. The wedding is like, I don't care what religion a girl is, she has got the venue planned. The dress she's going to wear planned. The chandeliers planned. The food planned. The invitation planned. The man, mm, it doesn't matter. Everything else. The right thing is, I mean, it, it was a bit tough because, uh, you know, uh, my wife is originally from Pakistan. No. That's exactly how her dad responded. <laughs> and he's from where? <laughs> so, you know, and it was really awkward when I, it was really awkward when I went to meet her family for the first time. You know, because like my, her mom, you know, she's like, you know, old school, she asked me really strange questions like, do you love my daughter? <laughs> I was like, sometimes. <laughs> Then, 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 like, she has like five, six brothers, right? And the brother, then, like, you know, they're, they're quite tough, because like, they're, they're, her family, they're Punjabi, you know, they're quite manly, you know, they're, so, brother, you're quite young. How come you only get married so early? And because uh, when I'm nervous, I joke. Um, my answer was because I'm really crap at washing plates. Now, <laughs> what's really funny is that they thought I was joking. Uh, <laughs> finally agreed to get married, things got really tough, right? Because you know, obviously we're from two cultures, and even though our cultures are similar, even with religions, we're all very similar, but we like to create divisions, don't we, human beings? We like to divide. And I remember her family insisting that we had a Pakistani bed. And I said, no, we will not have it. I just want to have, uh, according to the Quran, and Sunnah, I just want to have a uh, nikah in the mosque, simple, simple ceremony, and that's it. But her family, you know, they wanted, you know, you know, you know how you get traditional Pakistani wedding, and she was like, why not? I said, well, for starters, we're not cousins. And, um, <laughs> and also, we, we met, so that was by the tradition. But, <laughs> in, the end, in the end, we had a traditional Pakistani and Nigerian wedding as done by our family, and it was brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. You know, um, you turn up, and I, you know, I, 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 I'm not really much of a dancer, but you know, even I ended up dancing. Man, we came in, right, there was Africans on one side, um, Asians on the other, and they, you know, the Africans were eating naan bread, the Asians were eating jollof rice, they were all oh, this is dancing. <laughs> I love this jollof rice, it's not jollof rice, it's jollof, it's jollof. But anyway, it was really nice, man, like, we had, um, we had half night, but one third Nigerian, one third Pakistani, and Somalis. I don't know who invited them, but they were there. <laughs> And like they're, they're all dancing to each other's music, so like you have the Africans there on the bang right? <laughs> <laughs> They all do all that kind of stuff, and the Asians trying to do the African dancing, but it, it just wasn't working because nobody does it like us, man. But, <laughs> but they tried, and you know, it made me realize that you know what, like, people say all kinds of things like, oh, um, how do you guys get on? Don't your cultures clash? And I think that's a stupid question. Culture is so similar, like people spend so much time looking at the house and looking at the wallpaper, not the foundation of the house. Essentially, we're all the same people, you know? We're all the same people. Nigerians, Pakistan, they're all the same. They're like, oh, how do you guys get on with the culture? I'm like, we have the same culture. Like, what do you mean? Well, it's not as if you do Bangla in your sleep, right? There's other things in your culture apart from Bangla. You know, so, for example, uh, my wife is tanned all year round. So am I. <laughs> my wife likes really spicy food. So do I. And the conservatives hate us both equally. So I think... <laughs> no, I think, you know, I don't like politics. And I, I know, I always do, I make a point of doing some political jokes. I don't like politics because I think politics are really dumb. Because it's part of extremism. Now, before I go, I want to say, most, you know, most different people are different religions for whatever reason. I'm a Muslim because I chose to be. Yes, I was born in a Muslim family, but I like what Islam teaches. <laughs> and because of what Islam teaches, I don't really identify with politics, because politics is extremism. Now, let me give you a question. Who here likes going to Nando's? <laughs> well, what, you guys all on diets, yeah? Um, I don't like Nando's. I had two Tic Tacs last year, I'm sure. I don't like that. <laughs> the thing is, here's the thing. In Islam, we're told never to be extreme. Never to be extreme. Yes, I know. We're told never to be extreme. You know, 
in, in, in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, if you love someone too much, you may end up hating that person. If you hate someone too much, you might end up loving that person. And that's why the wife loves it. So, like, fellas, right? If you, I don't care how hungry, I'm asking the men because we get hungry. Girls can hold their hunger, men can't. Men, if you went to Nando's and ordered a full chicken, and half of it had maggots coming out, <laughs> would you eat the other half? No! Exactly. So what if the women who do politics, right wing, left wing, it's the same bird. They're all crooks. It's all the same. You don't believe you look at the clip. But this is another thing. As a Muslim, I don't believe in an extreme because every time you see an extreme, it contradicts itself. I'll give an example. I'll start off. Most of the Muslim clerics you see that say, oh, we hate the West. The West is evil. Live in the West. Um, <laughs> and our benefits. If you look at... Like the EBL. Woohoo! Love those guys. <laughs> the EBL, what I think are really dumb, because first of all, the people the EBL really pick on are Muslims and Sikhs. And I think that those are the two worst religions to start fights with. Don't you think so? Do you not know history? <laughs> Why would you pick a, a fight with a Muslim or a Sikh? First of all, we're Muslims. We're not exactly pacifists now, are we? You know, they say that they fight radical Islam. And in order to do this, they demonstrate outside mosques. Because this has been known to make Muslims much calmer. Um, <laughs> and then they attack Sikhs. I and mean, you know, this is not a disrespect to Sikhs in any way. But why the hell would you attack the one group of people legally allowed to carry knives? I don't know. Me. <laughs> Round here they call me Azra because my bliss is by 
find one, get one too. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? 
they hung up on me. I told you to come back when I could speak English, right? <laughs> so I put the I put the um, I put the, the video on YouTube, and we've got like hundreds of comments every single day for the past couple of years. And now it actually went viral. That found if you YouTube it, you'll find it. Comedians prank BMP. It's my mate and I. We prank we prank called him just before the election. BMP members who knew they could type. Um, <laughs> some, of the, some of the comments are very supportive, but a lot of them are very disgusting, racist comments. And one of them is actually my favorite because it's hilarious. Um, this guy from the BMP came and wrote down, and I quote, right? This is his words, not mine. Watch out, you lick <laughs> <laughs> Right? No, after you get a degree, no, you have to have a house. 
You get a car. That car isn't good enough. You have to get a bigger car. How are you going to fit your children? You don't even have any children, but you need a car big enough for your imaginary children, right? <laughs> uh, and it's silly. It's ridiculous because, you know, these things that you keep up, no one ever has enough. If anybody ever had enough, we'd stop working, right? So here's a story I want you to tell. If you ever have problems getting married because of these same reasons, this is a short story. You might find it funny, you might not. But it's a story you should tell your parents if they ever put you in this situation. Not just for Muslims, Christians, anybody who ever gets told that they need to be doing something, right? And it goes like this. A long, 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 long time ago, there was a fisherman, right? And he was really poor. We'll call him the poor fisherman. And he was asleep on a tree, clothes torn and tattered. And he was asleep. You know that really deep sleep where that stuff comes out of your mouth and you start changing your head. <laughs> come on, man. That's a good sleep. That's why I had to wake up from to come here. So don't let me have my bed. You know that kind of sleep, right? So the poor fisherman was sleeping, torn clothes, all he had was a fishing rod and a net. And a bigger, better dressed man, who was the rich fisherman, walked past him and said, Oi! Oi! Wake up, you lazy bum! Why aren't you fishing? And the poor fisherman said, Eh? <laughs> and then he says again, Why aren't you fishing, you lazy sod? And the poor fisherman said, Why should I be fishing? <laughs> and the rich fisherman says, You need to fish, because if you fish, you can sell that fish you make and make money. So, uh, and what do I do with the money? Well, when you get the money, you can go and buy yourself a better boat. And then, and then you can catch even more fish. And then, and then you can buy even bigger net. And then, and then you can catch even more fish. And then, and then you can buy a huge boat. And then, then you can hire people. And then, then you can catch lots and lots and lots of fish and become really rich. Oh, become rich. And then what do I do? Then you can relax. What did it look like I was doing before you came here with me? <laughs> you guys are great. I said, oh, I look one time.